Welcome to our Red Hat Government Symposium Executive Insights Series. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and we're here today with Dominic Del Molino, Vice President, Worldwide Public Sector Technology and Innovation at Amazon Web Services. Dominic, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me here, Wyatt. So let me start by setting sort of a basic stage here. How has the federal government, in your estimation, looked to really uh, use data to fuel digital transformation? You know, the best and easiest example that, that I think that we have to understand around this, it comes from how the government has looked to see how citizens are accessing government services. And they use data to understand, are citizens using traditional like desktop computers, or are they moving to personal devices like tablets and smartphones to access government websites? And since 2015, the U.S. federal government has been using data like this on how citizens access government websites to get alignment on whether or not they should be prioritizing maybe a mobile first experience for that newly native digital citizen. Um, a great example here is analytics.usa.gov. It's an open source website hosted on Amazon S3 and it's delivered via Amazon CloudFront and it shows how people are interacting with government websites. On any given day, more than 300,000 people across the US access federal websites. And now over half of them do so via mobile devices. And this is driving organizations like the Department of Education to adopt the mobile first policy for application development. On many days, the most popular U.S. federal website is login.gov. It's an open source identity framework hosted on AWS that provides an identity platform for public users who are interacting with government websites. So using data like this to understand how public users want to interact with government systems, especially when more and more of our interactions are digital, has really given the federal government that solid information that's accelerated digital transformation. Well, and then next, uh, diving a little deeper, uh, how has open source technology played an important, if not increasing role as the federal government has faced critical challenges, uh, for example, like the COVID-19 response? As governments around the world have been looking for solutions to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and cope with its impact, Open source technology is really playing an important role. Speed and scale have been super critical factors as this urgency around diagnostics, treatment, and care has increased. It's really been humbling to see government organizations take quick action and overcome barriers that normally would have taken years of reform to shift. And when resources are limited and the situation's evolving very quickly like this, open source software and communities can accelerate response. Governments really shouldn't have to compete with each other in this space, especially in the face of a common international emergency. If public sector organizations can collaborate to share code and tools, data, approaches that work, everyone's response can be that much faster. The US federal government has contributed to this. They've developed their own open source tools uh, like the CDC coronavirus self checker tool that's hosted on the CDC open technology website. And that's continued to evolve as we've learn more about how the virus affects us and what symptoms we should be looking out for. And because resources like this are open, they can replicate it and be used. Not only code, but the federal government has leveraged open data and associated tools to fight COVID-19. Uh, National Institutes for Health have made COVID-19 data, dashboards, and visualization tools like the AWS Data Lake for analysis of COVID-19 data available on their COVID-19 open access resources website. And, and as we continue to work with public sector bodies around the world, AWS understands how valuable open source software and those development communities really are at this time. And to accelerate that combined global response to COVID-19, we've gathered examples of third-party open code tools and standards and reformers in the public sector can use this. Uh, we've included these on a landing page that we call Open Government Solutions. And on our Open Government Solutions landing site, you can find open source and public resources published by government agencies and other public sector organizations around the world. These resources can help government agencies at all levels find solutions that worked in other places so they can accelerate their digital transformation. And so reusing what other people have found to work enables those governments to realize those benefits of open source solutions like increased agility, innovation, reduced costs, and really most of all, in this case, speed. I appreciate those examples. Next, I'm kind of curious, how does AWS address open source from its perspective? The longevity and viability of open source is really important to our customers, which is why we're a significant contributor and supporter of the open source community. Since AWS launched in 2006, 
We've contributed to a broad variety of open source software projects, and we will continue to do so as we seek to help our customers. We've made significant contributions to many open source projects, including Linux, Java, Kubernetes, Chromium, Hadoop, Spark, and Hive. We've also taken a leadership role in important open source projects like the free real-time operating system, Apache MXNet, Cassandra, and Kafka. At ABS, we strongly believe that not only is the software important, but the operation of a great open source system is important too, because managing that software as a service for customers makes it accessible and reliable for a broader population. And that's why we also invest in open source communities, training developers and operators. We sponsor open source events and conferences like ApacheCon, OSCon, the Open Core Summit, KubeCon. And we engage with open source foundations like the Apache Software Foundation, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and Analytics Foundation. Marketing support and AWS promotional credits for open source projects help communities by growing the number of end users and contributors. And that really accelerates the adoption of open source projects. Today, there are more than a thousand Amazon-led projects released as open source, and we continue to innovate with our customers to expand those capabilities of their open source projects as well. Interesting. And then maybe lastly, Dominic, what trends or technologies uh, are you seeing that you think federal agencies should really be paying attention to now in the coming year or two? The cloud enables customers of all shapes and sizes, including governments, defense agencies, and other public sector organizations to take advantage of newer and innovative technologies like machine learning and artificial intelligence, from computer vision systems for autonomous driving to FDA approved medical imaging, public sector innovators are driving forward with, with artificial intelligence. And we hear people say, you know, this is the, the, the time to be working in machine learning. You know, the algorithms have been around for a while, but things have changed. Machine learning has become more accessible because we now have access to really large cloud hosted open data sets, as well as a lot of computational capabilities that just weren't there previously. If you take something like Amazon SageMaker, for example, it takes kind of these hand carved esoteric algorithms and makes the whole process of creating machine learning models and algorithms much more accessible. And that's why governments and agencies and other public sector organizations are quickly adding artificial intelligence into their platform solutions and products. These things augment tasks that require human level intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, recommendations, and translation. But, but here's what I'm really excited about. Uh, it's something I think agencies should be paying attention to in the next year or so. And that is putting artificial intelligence and machine learning models to work in the places where they're needed the most. In the past, it was difficult not only just to develop these models, but to tune them to work on devices like smartwatches and cameras or personal safety items. And so recently, AWS has released an open source library called AWS SageMaker Neo. And that enables developers to build artificial intelligence and machine learning models and deploy them to a common runtime library, which vendors can customize for specific hardware. This really expands and opens up the possibility of getting those models out to the places where they're needed most. Um, and it's an exciting development that I really think agencies should be paying attention to. That does sound exciting and certainly seems to hold a lot of promise as well. Well, Dominic Della Molina, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to uh, share your insights and uh, about open source and the cloud and how that's helping uh, federal agencies. Thank you so much.